this episode of Café de René has been brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped, the number one choice for men's below-the-belt grooming. Featuring the new and improved Lawnmower 4.0 with a built-in LED light, ceramic blade for a closer cut, and also completely waterproof. To get that, but also including the rest of the package, including your ball deodorant, t-shirt, free boxes, weed whacker, please head over to manscaped.com, use the code CAFE, not only will you get all that, you will also get free shipping and also 20% off. So yep, please, head over to Manscaped, use the code CAFE, and your balls will thank you. Bonjour, welcome to another edition of Café de René. I am Ryan Shotgun, I am James Dunstall, joined once again by the Star Show, Mr. René Dupree. René, how are you doing today? I'm super, thanks for asking. Yeah, beautiful day in Canada today. That's how far kind of the big day out. <laughs> oh, you got that one? Yeah. All those like like salt power clients are running for you, dude. I've watched every episode. Oh, I love it. Ugh, anything interesting happening in your life, Renee? Any announcements? Well, just got word I'm headed back to Japan soon. Just waiting on the the, the paperwork and stuff. And uh, yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be making my return very very shortly. So for all the Noah fans out there. Uh, I've got two and a half years of fucking bent up frustration in me. I'm going to tear it up. Just wait and see. A lot of great feedback from the fans. I looked at the Noah Twitter page and they're all hyped. I mean, I apologize. I can't read Japanese, but I did translate quite a few of the tweets and a lot of fans out there that are looking forward to you returning. I'm, I'm looking forward to returning too, man. Can't wait. Noah's on the rise, and uh, it's going to be good, man. Get in front of big, big, large crowds and big buildings again, you know. Can't freaking wait, dude. You have to make sure you put your Twitter handle as at Cafe de Rene for April Dusty. <laughs> yeah. Is there any way we can translate, like, or have, like, uh, subtitles in Japanese for our shows? I can try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a, exactly. I can try. I'll have a look. I know you can get subtitles, uh, and you can get it in different languages. Japanese, I'm not sure, but I'll have a look at it because um, here's a here's a good one for you, Renee. So I do my research for the episodes, like you know I do, yeah. and I'm going through a lot of ca- yeah, your cage match site, cagematch.com. Do you know someone's actually put a link to our YouTube channel as part of your cage match profile? Okay, what, what, what? Cage, cage match, what? Cagematch.com, basically, it, it basically, it's got every single match in your career pretty much on it. What? Yeah, not just yourself, like every wrestler, it's like a big database and, you know, people rank the superstar, like the average uh, ranking and everything like that, all your matches and everything, and your bios and everything. It's a, it's a great site to look into it because it's, I think it's made purely by fans, but, it was, um, but I was looking at it and it showed you like, you know, your Twitter link to it and someone actually attached uh, the YouTube channel link to your cage match site. So I'm like, oh, that's pretty damn sweet. Oh, that's cool. So Please subscribe and watch every, all my videos. Five times so a piece. Huh? <laughs> Please do so. We've been getting a lot of subscribers. We're nearly at 3,000. By the time this comes out, we might be at 3,000. But if not, please tap that button. We want to hit 3K by the end of this week. Yeah, share with your friends. You know, every Monday at noon or around noon, it drops. So, you know, before, if you're a WWE watcher, before Raw comes on, just uh, tune in to me and, you know, 
or anytime doesn't matter yep. and before we get to today's topic everyone if you hang around to the end of the show we'll be making a guest announcement for this thursday big guest this week so make sure you stick around but today's topic renee another fan vote so everyone enjoyed the japan episodes lately but we got back to van votes and uh Close vote this week. Second place was Jim Fournette, which I think would win, but the winner was your time in ECW. So let's get into it. So I mentioned it last week if you was a fan of ECW growing up, which you replied you was just a fan of wrestling in general. But who were some of your favorites growing up watching ECW? Oh, uh, Van Dam. I like the Van Dam matches with uh, Jerry Lynn. Those are really good. Yes. Great matches. Uh, Sabu was always cool to watch because he was different, right? Mm. Uh, I admit I was a Sandman fan. When I was in high school, I'd go to parties and we'd drink beer and I'd always do the Sandman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he was awesome. I was actually watching, uh, I've been, I've said to you a few times, I've watched quite a lot of the ODCW, like 94, 95, and I think one of my highlights is when they brought Bueller in and you got the Raven and Tommy Dreamer feud over Bueller. Uh huh. I love that feud. And when uh, Stevie Richards is the best sidekick, <laughs> he's so underrated, Stevie Richards. Right. Yeah, I always enjoy being in the ring with Stevie. He's really good. Um, but yeah, so the origins of the ECW uh, revival. So it started off with the. Uh, DVD, The Rise and Fall of ECW. Uh, did you ever watch it? I have not. I recommend it. <laughs> um, obviously, I know you haven't got the network, but I do think you can find it on YouTube. It is about three hours long, um, but it was actually, for the longest time, the second biggest selling WWE DVD. I think it was only behind WrestleMania 21. No shit. Wow. It was WrestleMania 21 or the Invasion pay-per-view. It was one of them two. I might have been. I think it might have been East, uh, WrestleMania 21, but I might be completely wrong. It was one of them two, but I know it was second behind either one of them. Okay. Uh, just so by the book, it it's weird though because a lot of people love watching them rise and fall like documentaries or like videos. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoy uh, documentaries too. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. Maybe when I uh, on my flight to uh, Tokyo. Oh, to kill. Yeah, it's a great uh, documentary. I do recommend it to everyone. And um, after the success of it, RVD was, um, I don't think he was injured at the point, but he basically came with the idea to Vince McMahon saying, look how well the DVD's done. Why not we have a reunion show? And it eventually happened in 2005. Unfortunately, Fandam was injured during it. But did you ever watch the pay-per-view, One Night Stand 2005? I think I, yeah, I think I did. Can't remember it, but. It was the one where Paul Heyman buried JBL. Oh, okay. Good. With the, with the infamous line, the only reason you were champions is because Triple H doesn't want to work too. <laughs> that was great. That's a good line, yeah. And this this was the point where Edge stole later off Matt Hardy. Oh, and, okay. Like, look. Everyone, it's Edge. And I've got three words for him. Matt fucking Hardy. <laughs> so, uh, William was great at night. Uh, but one of the most infamous moments, and we're going to have to bring Stevie Richards on the show one day. Yeah. So, the big brawl at the end. JBL laid into Blue Meanie and knocked to give him concussion, bloodied him up. So, a few days later, to avoid a lawsuit, Meany was allowed to wrestle on SmackDown against JBL. Okay. And there was the infamous spot where Stevie Richards delivers the hardest hit and chair shot you'll ever hear. Oh, what is Stevie Richards? Richards with the chair? Oh, I think I've seen that, yeah. Yeah, I'll splice it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's devastating. We're going to have to get Stevie on the show to talk about it. But One Night Stand was a massive success. So one thing led to another, and they decided to bring back the third brand, uh, bring back ECW as a third brand. So I suppose my question for you is when was the first time you heard about ECW coming back as a third brand? Um, probably when the office call, called me and told me, hey, you're going to you're gonna be on this ECW brand. 
at that point I had been off the road for a while. So I was just, I didn't give a shit where I wrestled. I just wanted to get on the, you know, get on the road and make money. Right. But what did you do during this point? Uh, that's when I, uh, I had my hernia surgery, right? Yes. 2005. And they, I thought I was going to be off for like a couple of weeks. And then I was off for eight months going freaking crazy, bored on my mind, paranoid. Mm. Paranoid, there was uh, post-WrestleMania releases where they released like fucking 15 guys in one shot. Yeah. So, yeah, they told me I was going to be on the um, new ECW, so I was like, fine. But didn't make any money there, so. Well, one of the uh, big moments to start off was... Uh, Rob Van Nam defeating John Cena has become the WWE slash ACW champion that one night stand 06. Uh, obviously, we all know you've got a great friendship with RVD. Uh, how was it seeing him become WWE champ? It was cool. Uh, didn't last long, though, did it? <laughs> what <do you> know? <laughs> how long? How long did he have it? Like two weeks? It wasn't much longer. Um, well, I know he done a pay per view. I know he defended the title against Edge at Vengeance, so probably a month tops. Yeah. yeah. So it was unfortunate because not long after he lost the ECW, well, he lost the WWE title to Edge, then he lost the uh, the ECW title to the Big Show. Right. So, so was was you already in the locker room before? Big Show became champion, or was it after Big Show became champ? Dude, I was only with ECW for like two or three months. I can't even remember who the champion was. I don't even remember if I was there when... It's, it's, I can't remember, man. I can't remember. No. I debuted as a singles, right? Yeah. My first match was, I think, in Madison Square Garden against Balls. That's right, yeah. And then I think I had two TV matches with uh, CM Punk, hmm. one with Bobby Lashley, um, yeah, then I was not, a, not because I wasn't a part of that pay-per-view, you know, like the worst pay-per-view in history. What was it called? December. December. Uh, he was on the dark show. I mean, I we'll did, get to I did the dark uh, match. You know who I, I wrestled? Stevie. That's right. Yeah. And then uh, that's where Sabu... Uh, Sabu was in no condition to perform. Remember that? Oh, yeah. The fans were pissed off. He got replaced by Adco Holly. What a letdown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think he uh, overtook some medication that night. Yeah. And then they got taken off the uh, pay-per-view. And then, yeah, then we had uh, me and Sly reunite the resistance for one night only. We won a squash match against two uh, luchadors. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I fucked up the next day at OVW and uh, got sent to rehab. <laughs> Well, before we get to the end of the episode, <laughs> I want to fill in the blanks. <laughs> right. Why is this short show in history? But, but now Bulls Mahoney did work quite a lot with on the live shows now. So that was Bulls to work with. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Well, no, Bulls was a good wrestler. Um, I remember when I found out I was working with Bulls on the, on the house shows. You know how he was very well known for those chair shots? Yeah. That that was a big concern to me, so I went to John Johnny Ace and I said, "Hey man, I don't have to take those chair shots to the head, do I?" And then he looked at me like, basically his facial was like, "If we want you to take a chair shot to the head, you're gonna take it." Wow! Well, like motherfucker, I knew back then how stupid and dangerous that shit was, but you know what I mean? Especially now, what we know about head head concussions and trauma, right? Mm -hmm. But it's just, um, that's another reason why I hate 
I hate being a part of a company where they force you to do shit that's unsafe and you can't you can't voice your opinion because then you know what I mean? Did you see the quote by Vince McMahon that he made very recently, last couple of days? The what? There was a quote by Vince McMahon, and he said, when you leave WWE, you know how to treat people. Really? Like shit? Yeah. (laughs) Someone actually replied. They they said, is this guy being serious? Does he know how much the wrestlers uh, bullied yourself and Mohammed Hassan? Someone actually tweeted that in reply. Oh, it wasn't just me and him. Oh, it was floats. That was a, yeah, that was a fucking culture. Yeah. The bitter, paranoid veterans who scared to lose their spot or, you know what I mean? It's documented that you, don't, you didn't like the SmackDown locker room for obvious reasons. How was the ECW locker room in comparison? Who was on it? Yeah, I mean, obviously, like a lot of the, the, there was quite a few ECW originals like Sandman and Dreamer and obviously RVD Sabu and that and some of the newer guys yourself obviously CM Punk Mike Knox uh, Kevin Ford so yeah. Um, yeah how was it in comparison it was better than Smackdown hmm um yeah who, who was there I used to ride with Sabu because he didn't have a license or a credit card, so I had to book everything, and that was stressful. Yeah. Yeah. Any fun stories? Uh, no, I don't want to say it publicly, but yeah, he, it was very difficult, very stressful. One night he forgot his, uh, his watch and wedding ring in a hotel room, so I had to take the... T- get the task of fucking calling the hotel room and finding it and make sure they mail it back to his house. But yeah, there was other stuff that happened that I don't want to say publicly, but let's just say it was stressful. Yeah. Um, I mentioned Mike Knox was part of the locker room and he had the angle with um, Kelly Kelly. Yes. How was Kelly oh, Kelly? I used to ride with Kelly Kelly too. Can't complain. How was she? Young. I mean, I was young too, but she was, you know, she was dating uh, Tess at the time. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Now she's all right. Uh, I noticed as well, you actually worked the SmackDown Dark match. Uh, I didn't know he was part of the company at this time. Two Code Scorpio. Yes. You're I the... didn't know he was part of the company during this time. He was with Noah. If I'm not mistaken, he might have been their champion. A GAC champion at the time. He worked with me. And I remember uh, he told me that was Sabu's ex-wife. She was Japanese. Right. She was at the show and she said it was the best match in the night. Wow. So he got hired off that match, right? But, you know, he was coming straight from Japan, so it was very, very snug, you know, it was, you know, which I didn't mind. So I finished the match, right? And I'm walking back to the dressing room, and then I pass through, like, backstage as a monitor where all the guys watch the matches, right? So CM Punk stands up, and he goes, how was that insecurity? Because he hit me with a... Insecurity that it was he laid it in right he he rang my bell off it right mm. and as a joke I was like what insecurity basically saying he, he caught me with it right why do you think he was so concerned with that I'll let you explain it <laughs> I just told you he was the Noah champion right yes yes have you ever heard of two cold Scorpio interview how he's basically doesn't sugarcoat shit and right? yeah. Who does CM Punk copy off of? Move for move. Yeah. So in his mind, he wanted me to bury Scorpio mm. to prevent him from being getting a job. 
Because he, yes. he, he was in that locker room, Scorpio was. He would call out fucking Punk and just fuck. You know what yes. I mean? Yeah. And Punk can't fight worth a shit. And Scorpio can strap. You know what I mean? Teddy Hart kicked his ass. Everybody kicked his ass. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the political bullshit that I hate. I hear the rumor, Renee, that well, everyone knows about the CM Punk chance, but I had a rumor that a lot of them chance was actually plants. Yeah, I'm the one who fucking exposed it. Yeah. I seen it. So he was he was rested because we were on that same brand together, right? Yeah. And uh I would always go up, hide up into the in the stands to watch watch the matches. It's always a better feeling watching it with the crowd, right? So I'm sitting and watching, and uh, I'm seeing these CM Punk chants, right? And once, this, once the chants start getting, I mean, you can get anything over if you chant it. Remember what, 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 stupid as that is, and fucking annoying I as it is. I, I love it fast and like it. <laughs> well, whatever. You can get anything over. It's repetition, right? And it's on television. So anyway, the CM Punk chart chance started, and then I noticed there was guys all over the arena walking out, taking off their shirts, or yeah, taking off their CM Punk shirts, or not CM, but ECW shirts. So that's just one way to get somebody over, right? I mean, like fucking Goldberg when he was in WCW, they piped in the Goldberg fucking chance. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's all a work, dude. But the thing is, if you do that over and over on television, it catches on. Yes. Right? So. That was all um, Paul Heyman, I suppose, because obviously he was the booker at the time. Paul Heyman does all those little tricks. Hmm. Yeah. To be fair, Renee, say what it is, it works. Well, it's all a work. It's wrestling business, dude. It's all smoke and mirrors, right? And, uh, yeah, so what someone we haven't spoke about, and they came back to see a commentator, was uh, Joey Styles. Much interactions with him? Yeah, he was all right. I first met Joey. I met Joey when I was 17 in Calgary for the Matt Rats promotion that was uh, that Teddy Hart had started. Hmm. Him and Eric Bischoff were at the show for whatever reason. I think he might have done the commentary on that show. And, uh, yeah, he was all right. Yeah. I, he got over me when I heard he knocked out uh, Bradshaw. Oh, at the airport. <laughs> was it at the airport? I get mixed. Uh, that might have been Steve Blackman with one of the... Uh... Oh, that was Steve Blackman at the airport, yeah. Who did Steve Blackman knock out JBL? Was it one of the nasty boys? Who did Steve Blackman knock I, out? Yeah, I guess he was fucking with uh, fucking with Blackman. Yeah, and I think Blackman like, gave him a karate kick and like like grabbing his ass. Like it was some, it was something like I know I, well I told you my opinions the other week. Uh, um, yeah, the story is like he do the same thing to Rob too. RVD. Yeah. Anyway, not that there's anything wrong with that. If that's the way you float, just, you know. But anyway, yeah, he knocked out uh, Bradshaw. So he's over with me. Dave Lagano was right throughout the time as well, wasn't he? Mm. <laughs> Another switch hitter. Yep. So uh, a lot of uh, bad stories about Dave Lagana. Um Well, would you like to hear my story about... Uh... Go for it. So when I was on Raw, I was 19, and I was a good-looking kid. And said writer, we used to make inappropriate advances towards me. Like physical touching. So when I told the administration, <laughs> just laughed it off. Like, hence... Uh, the reason 110 why I fucking hated working there. He was touchy-feely with Kevin Fawn as well, wasn't he? Yeah. 
Kevin told Taker, and Taker got so and so fired. Oh, so Taker got him fired. That's that's what I, the story I heard. Yeah, because he went but to. Like, cool. When I hold, when I told the head of talent relations that hey, this, you know, one of your homosexual Hollywood writers is physically inappropriately touching me here. You know what I mean? Again, I was nineteen. I was scared to lose my job. Well, you're still a kid. Yeah, I was still a kid. Creepy. Yeah, that's a creepy fucking place. Trust me. Speaking of Kevin Fawn, Ariel was part of the uh, roster as well. Yeah, she didn't last longer. She didn't last long, and I know why. She's a goddamn moron. Okay, next. <laughs> We're flying today. <laughs> <laughs> See, you see everyone, I'm trying to drag this show out. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, you tagged with Matt Striker. Must be a good Matt Striker story. I'm the one I'm the one that actually came up with the idea to him for him to be a manager. Right. Yeah. Because that's, that's that. quality, right? He's like a natural heat seeker. And he can talk. Uh. I think he's just left Impact Wrestling now, actually. He's still there? No, he's just left. Just just left? Yeah, he wasn't there long at all. Uh, left. Shame, because he, I, I think he's really good as a commentator. Yeah, but he rubs people the wrong way. Yeah, because um, he, he liked to actually name the moves when he was commentating. And Michael, Michael Cohen... Cherry the King, I think it was, wasn't big fans of it, so they would just like laugh at him when he was doing it. When you actually call the move its actual name? Yeah, they would laugh at him. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, uh, no, uh, well, you, had, you, you mentioned you had your match with Punk on TV, but at the same time, ECW, to bring in the viewers, done the uh, extreme strip poker match at the same time. Yeah. Is your yeah. fan of that? Well, I'm a fan of good-looking women taking the clothes off. Huh? Yeah. Dude, to be honest, by that time, I was so fed up with it, with wrestling, I didn't even watch my matches back. No? It was like clock in, clock out. Yeah. Was that bad during that time? Yeah. Like I said, I wasn't making any money. I was making my downside guarantee, and that's it. And He, he said last time, uh, you said that last week, actually, when you first signed your contract compared to when you was finishing up in ECW, there was such a big difference. Oh, in my first year on Raw to the last year? Yeah. Yeah, it's horrible. Less than half. Wow. Less than half. Actually, it's probably closer to like a quarter of what I was making my first year. You know, what was... Go ahead. Sorry, what was the ECW attendance this like? Because our fair just mentioned Shit. previously, they were pretty Horrible. bad. Horrible. There were some yeah. nights there were maybe 150 people in the audience. Not bad. Tops, 1,000 people. Wow. Yeah. That's why it didn't last. It's crazy as well, because like 1,000 tops, that was more than what they was actually drawing back in the glory years. Right. Yeah, I know. It's, it's crazy to think that. Yeah, it's to me that promotion is just. I mean, there was good substance there, and you know, it gave a place to guys to work. And a lot of people that worked there said they enjoyed it. But as far as I thought, it was an overrated promotion, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's one of them. There is some good storylines I do enjoy, and. Some of the matches are good, like when you saw the likes of Benoit and Guerrero coming through and, you know, delivering these great matches. But I've never really been the biggest fan of hardcore matches. Uh, I think there's a place for them. But, and when I have watched some ODCW matches, they are just, like, so overbooked. Yeah. I know. Back in the old day, territory days, they were called, like, a Texas street fight or a Chicago brawl or whatever, right? Then they just said hardcore. But you had to build up to that. You mm. built up to that. You had a regular match, then a return, a return, return. Then you had that, you know. 
And for the last 20 some years, they've just put hardcore match, which it means nothing. To me, hardcore wrestlers are just fucking, it's to cover up the fact that we don't know how to wrestle properly, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, Paul Heyman, we haven't spoken about really, but this culminated with him at December to this moment, the pay per view. Uh, he was on the Dax match with Stevie Richards and it was the big elimination chamber at the end. Uh, great spot by Tess diving off one of the pots for a diving elbow. The original plan, according to Paul Heyman, he wanted CM Punk to enter number one and tap everyone out with the Anaconda Vice and become the new champion. Uh-huh. Vince wasn't a fan of that and he had Lashley become champion and the fans shitted on it. The show ended 30 minutes early. Lowest pay-per-view buy rate in the history of WWE. Paul Heyman got fired because of it. No shit, did he really? Yeah, that, that night, Paul Heyman actually got fired. Not uh, the same night as that pay-per-view. Wow. That's how much of a disaster it was. To be fair, <laughs> I've watched bad pay-per-views. It's not the worst pay-per-view. I've watched terrible pay-per-views. Heroes of Wrestling comes to mind. But <laughs> the, the, I don't, have you ever watched Heroes of Wrestling, really? You sure did. Oh, dude, we should do a watch along of that one day. <laughs> yes, we should. Everyone, if you want to watch along, leave a comment below and leave a like. Yeah, do that on Twitter. Put a watch along and put like three or four different, yeah, different uh, uh, pay per views. Yeah, but yeah, definitely, uh, we'll definitely put that in the poll one day. <laughs> um, but yeah, these um, you was you didn't last much longer after this, like you said. Tim, uh, you wrestled Lashley um, after this, yeah. and then you did a month break, had one match with Larry Systems, where you said previously they were bringing up plans for you and Sly to become tag team champions. Yep. Yep. And then I went to, uh, yeah. I had an incident in OVW where I overtook a medication and. <sighs> I actually asked for help after that because emotionally, mentally, I was drained and just didn't give a shit about anything. And then, uh, yeah. Right. That was probably one of the best decisions I ever made in my life. Right. Well, we flew through ECW, Renee, so safe to say, not the greatest of times in your career. And what probably another one of the factors that led to you leaving. What led to me leaving? We know why you left, but this is probably one of the reasons why you left, because you just stopped enjoying wrestling at this time. Yeah. Yeah. And I heard rumblings like when I went back, uh, I went to Dallas for Raw. It was actually Baby Hebner was like, yeah, man, I heard they're going to start you on Raw. So even knowing that I was going to debut back on Raw, I still wanted out. Yeah. That's how, yeah, that's how just fed up I was. I just didn't care about wrestling anymore. Right. Yeah. So, before we leave, Renee, uh, we'll get some fan questions in. Okay, let's do it. Right. Loads of fan questions, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, writing them in. Uh, how many questions? 38 questions, but uh, I can't read all of them, but we'll try and read as many as we can. So, um, let's see. All right. Uh, Kit Ramsey's brother right who at the time in his uh, WC, uh, wwe ecw would you have considered the locker room leaders if any yeah see that whole locker room leader bullshit i hate that shit you know what i mean because then you're putting in like statuses and a hierarchy and all that bullshit but probably tommy dreamer yeah I think Tommy's a guy that everybody likes. So I, I'd say Tommy. I know CM Punk appointing himself as the locker room leader. It's like, dude, go fuck yourself. Um, hey, Joe, two on love. Were there discussions about you joining forces with Test or the New Breed while you was in ECW? I was gone before then. Yeah, he was actually, yeah. Yeah. New Breed was a fun stable. You would have, uh, you would have uh, actually done well in there. 
Uh, one under. Uh, Renee, how well did you get along with the ECW originals? So, those, like, we've those, seen those are the guys I got along with most. I had to drive half of them around because none of them had fucking money or license or a credit card. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, Johnny Parker, uh, what made you choose for no elbow pads and no knee pads look in ECW? Just to be different. Yeah. That's then all of a sudden, Cody Rhodes, he shows up with fucking no knee pads. Does everyone copy you, Renee? <laughs> Dude. Here's another one. There we go. When I was in Wrestle 1, I wanted a name change, right? So I thought, right. of, so, you remember Tito Ortiz? He was the Huntington Beach bad boy. Oh, yeah. Well, I grew up where I live now. It's like right on a beach. It's called Parley Beach. So I said, okay, I'm going to copy this guy. He's not really in wrestling, but, you know, Parley Beach bad boy. PB3. I got it written on my boots. Okay? All of a sudden... TNA comes up with a character called EC3. Right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I've been anyway. more times. Fuck. Keep going. Uh, Turka Giza. Uh, is, uh, Renee, do you remember when they want to build, uh, when they was trying to build a brand around Kurt Angle, but then a couple of months later he left? Yeah, he uh, he was burned out too. That was in 2006, right? That was at the beginning of it, pretty much. They uh, he done the pay per view one night stand over six. Yeah, because uh, they done like a little mock draft, and him and RVD got drafted over, and. Uh, they were planning on building the brand around him. It would have been interesting had he stayed, but yet within two months, he was gone, basically. Yeah. Yeah, he was, again, burnout. When did he get there? He got there in 98 or 99? Oh, originally, originally. Um, ECW, it would have been 96, 97, not long after he won the Olympic gold medal. No, but when did he first debut with the WWF on... WWE 99, I believe. He, he, may, he may stay be on TV. Survivor Series 99. Okay. So that, that's usually six or seven years, guys usually get burnt out. Right. That's usually the time where guys have had enough of it, right? Yeah. And there's a crazy stat here as well because he spent longer in TNA than he did actually in WWE. Yeah. Easier schedule, probably. Yeah. Not enough, not as much stress. Uh, question by Matthew Shevel. Um, did you have any issues with Paul Heyman and WWE ECW? Never liked him. Tell us why. Lion sack of shit. Yeah. Yeah, I can just tell he's a lion sack of shit. Yeah. Did anything you lied about in particular? No, I could just. I've been around the business my entire life. I can, you know, that's why I don't get along with very many people or associate with very many people because 99% of them are full of fucking shit. <laughs> you caught me on a bad day, James. He doesn't get along with me, everyone. I just, you know, but he's like, we need to do the show. But he's like, do we have to? <laughs> uh, Joe95. Did you witness any backstage fights or tantrums during your time in ECW? Why do I have a feeling you're going to say CM Punk? <laughs> yeah, he, he's another guy who rubs everybody, well, rubs a lot of people the wrong way. I remember one time we're putting together a match. This is our second time he wrestled, right? And Ricky Steamboat was our agent. And uh, I suggested to start it off a different way where I start on top, basically with the heat. And that's something that I learned from Pat Patterson, especially for TV matches, right? And there he goes, Poof! like being overly dramatic, like, oh my God, you know, 
you little fucking prick. I've been doing this longer than you. I don't care how much hype you got from all these marks on the internet. Uh, I know more than you, all right? You little fuck. Never liked them. All right, if you want, uh, Herbert A, the hardest guy in the ECW locker room. The who? Hardest guy. Hardest? Yeah, toughest. Mm-hmm. Well, Van Damme's pretty tough. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he's a badass. <laughs> I would say I'm Van Damme. Try, not trying to toot my own horn, but I'm pretty tough too. I mean, I wrestled out knee pads and old uh, Sparky Plug tried and hitting me in the back of the head with a steel chair and kicking me in the temple 15 times, but I still got up. So he got yeah. knocked me out. Uh, yeah. Who else was on that roster? Red Dog. Red Dog ain't no chump. He's oh, tough. yeah. Uh, Wrestlers Lashley. in general are tough. Lashley. Lashley. Oh, yeah, Lashley's a tough one. Yeah. Any stories on Lashley, Renee? We never really got into him. I was, ah, girl, Lashley's a great guy. Hmm. But he got frustrated, too. What year did he leave? 07, 08? It wasn't long after, actually. He didn't, so that year, he was in, like, one of the headline matches at WrestleMania against Umaga, like right. Trump uh, challenged Cena for the WWE title um, in 07. And um, yeah, and then I think he left a few months after that. Him, he was married to uh, Crystal Marshall at the time. Yes, he was. She was one of the prettiest, well put together women I've ever met in my life. Wow. I heard they had a kid, right? Are they still together? No. I know they no. have. That kid is going to be a supermodel. Yeah. This is genetics, man. Those two. Holy Christ. I like Lashley. Good guy. Yeah. Nice guy. Uh, uh, where is he? he? Well, where is he asked about? Uh, he said in the shoot interview, Paul London said that Dave Lagana made uh, advances towards Kevin Farr. That's if they was true. They was true. Where is he? Um, so um, we got that um let me see um christian ramirez who was the biggest bully on the ecw brand if there was any holly or was he too scared about his friends nah, he's just a fucking prick miserable motherfucker well he didn't have, he didn't have his backup with him did he <laughs> what well, he didn't have his backup with him like JBL and that. He was just by himself, basically. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's the way it is. They gang up on you. Because they're a bunch mm. of fucking dickheads. Anyway. Uh, great question. Uh, something I've always wondered by Philip Connor. Uh, why wasn't New Jack uh, involved with the ECW? Because <laughs> he probably had an arrest uh, criminal record and a mile long arrest record. I know they were going to bring him back. They were going to bring him in when they did the angle with uh, Carlito and uh, John Cena, where his Jesus or whatever stabbed him. They wanted to bring in New Jack. New Jack, <laughs> New Jack was done it for real. <laughs> right. New Jack came in for a tryout and. I don't think he even had the tryout. I think he left before. He left? Yeah. Or was asked to leave. Who knows? Um, see, a couple more. Um, let's see. Uh, black hood, why the long hair? Why the long hair? Just to change it up. Get different. Right. And I'll find I don't one. I love the all white. When I dressed up in all white, he loved it. Hey, Vince. Yeah. What's your favorite attire to wear, Renee? Your favorite color? Is there a particular favorite for wrestlers? No, just, I always try to be different than everybody else, right? Yeah. And at one point in time, everybody had black trunks, black boots. It's like, yeah, you got to be different. You got to stand out. No, that's why all white. When I wore the all white, 
you know. Yeah. It's different. Last question, Renee. Uh, I know you've mentioned the uh, tag team title belts, um, but question by uh, KP Spink. Um, any insight to what creative had in mind for you long term or the vignettes look to be promoting you for a world title run or something? Love the podcast, guys. Kyle P. So you've mentioned the tag belts, but any other plans when you first came in? Vince. Vince had tapped me on the shoulder saying, good thing is going to happen for you, kid. And I looked at him and go, yeah, right. And I walked away from him. <laughs> That's why I started jobbing every single night. No, because I, I had heard it so many times before. And at that point, like I said, I hated, I just hated being there. Yeah. And my pay was the shits. Um, yeah, I was, I was not in a good frame of mind at that point in time. So going going away to the rehabilitation was the best thing for me to clear my head and not watch wrestling at all. And just, you know, but then my hair got my head got so clear and so when the Benoit thing happened, it was like and the, the biggest thing was like walking back into the to WWE like uh arena or whatever, TV and like obviously some people, but most people like, oh business as usual, laughing and it's like nobody gave a fuck, right? Oh. Uh, that's just how quickly you're disregarded and forgotten about, you know? Yeah, it's just that revolving door of talent, isn't it? That's it. Well, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, before we do go, Renee, uh, tell everyone about our next guest coming this coming Monday. Well, he is tough enough. He was one of the greatest human beings I ever met in my life, Maven Huffman. Join the cafe next week. Don't you dare miss it. Great guest, everyone, Maven. Uh, personally, had him on my podcast originally. I got him first. And <laughs> great guy. Uh, re just a real great guy. Uh, good spirit and uh, some great stories with us. And uh, Renee does some uh, promoting for another brand, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> So. I'm sure that people will see the uh, the teasers coming up. That's a that's a really good one. So, until next time, everyone. Bonsoir. <laughs>